Hi, my name is Bill Bailey. I'm a hydraulic systems manager. I've been doing this for 35 years. And today we wanna to talk about right sizing replacement boilers. There are three major ways to figure out the output of our system so we correctly size the new boiler. The first method is load calculation. That means to actually do an actual heat loss on the building. There's some good and bad to this. Good is it's the most accurate if the data we have is correct. You're assuming a lot of stuff here. You're looking into a wall. You're trying to figure out what is the R value of that wall. 30 years ago, the technician had that stuff on the blueprint so he could do that correctly. You don't know that. So human nature being what it is, we tend to oversize stuff. So the load calc is the most accurate if your data is correct. If not, it could probably end up oversizing the boiler. Second method is the tag method. And what do we mean by tag method? That's to go to the boiler room, look at the actual tag on the boiler. In this case, this boiler's input is 100,000 BTUs. Its output is 83,000 BTUs. Is that correct? It's correct for the boiler, but is that correct for the building? I don't know. A lot of times boilers are oversized. People want to be safe to make sure they have enough heat. It all comes down to the third component or third type of system, which is called EDR. EDR is equivalent direct radiation. It's a calculation that was designed back in the 20s that actually looked at each radiator and said what that radiator output was, or maybe it's fin tube, but they all had a number. And that was the maximum amount of heat that these components could put out, or these terminal units. So we're gonna talk mainly about EDR because it's my preferred method, because if I only can put out so much heat, I only have to put just a bit more than I can put out. I don't need to double, triple, or whatever size that. In my experience, I have seen multiple boilers, twice the radiation that's out there. That's just costing you money in the long run. EDR, how do we calculate it? Well, EDR again stands for equivalent direct radiation. So what we're trying to get to is how much heat can this radiator put out, this baseboard? this commercial baseboard or this radio floor. Radiators are probably the easiest one to calc. Go to the chart, look up that radiator. There's books on this all over the place. Today we're gonna to give you a standard chart that covers most of it. You're gonna look at, the first thing you're gonna do is measure the height of the radiator. Now we don't go here, here we just go right to the floor, right up to the top of the radiator. In this application, this radiator is 32 inches high. We then look at the number of columns. So by columns, I mean these tubes. In this application, this radiator, this is a three column radiator. So I know the height and the column. Going to that chart, it'll show me 32 inch high radiator with three columns of this style is equal to 4.5 square feet of equivalent radiation. So that means this radiator, if I laid it out, would cover four and a half square feet. I then count the sections. Should be really straightforward. One, two, three sections. Now I take my 4.5 times three, and I come up with 13 and a half square feet radiated surface that this can put out. I take that number times by my 170. I know that the maximum output from this radiator is going to be 2,295 BTUs. For simple, simplicity's sake, we're going to call that 2,300 BTUs. That's what this radiator can put out in form of heat. That's it. That's all it can do. I shove 5,000 in, guess what's coming out? 2,300 BTUs. That's it. The rest will be wasted. Okay. 
That's radiators. Baseboard, really simple. Go to the manufacturer. Go to something similar to the height. What you're looking for is to count up the actual footage of fin. I don't want to know the length of the cover. That doesn't mean anything to me. Because if I got just pipe running under that cover, the amount of heat it gives off is next to nothing. It's not even worth calculating. What I'm worried about is this piece of fin tube and how many pieces of fin do I have? Or how many feet of fin do I have? This manufacturer says this gives off 600 BTUs per foot. I take that number, 600 times, let's say 10 feet of fin tube, is that what I actually have? That means that particular piece of baseboard, even though it might be 20 feet long, is only gonna give me 6,000 BTUs output because it all comes down to the fin tube itself. This is my heat emitter. If I take that up to a commercial version, something like this, this is just a bigger version, okay? Go to the manufacturer, similar manufacturer, larger fin, what do you think? I'm gonna get more output. Therefore, I gotta get there, look up in their catalog, I got a three quarter copper tube. I got four and a quarter inch fin. It's all listed there on this size of baseboard. Do the math. You're gonna come up with a number that's gonna tell you the maximum output that that piece can do. Again, do not just measure cover to cover. You will be wrong. You will oversize your system. And probably in commercial buildings, you'll end up having, because your calculation is incorrect, a bigger quote, quote, load than the boiler ever could put out. Because there's a lot of times they run cover corner to corner for appearance sake. So be careful with that. The third type that's very common nowadays would basically be radium floor tubing, okay? What we're looking at here is to count up the square footage now this ain't square foot EDR, this is actual square footage of the concrete. I don't really know, need to know how many feet of tube is in the floor. That's not gonna help me. Okay, what I wanna know is what is the square footage of that building. If I've got a 30 by 30 building or floor in that shop, that means I got 900 square feet. Radiant floor temperatures run a lot different more like 90 to 110 versus 180 over here, I'm gonna have a lower output. I never wanna have 180 degrees in my radiant floor, because guess what? You're not gonna be able to stand on it. It's gonna be miserable. 90 to 110, gonna work beautiful. Gonna meet all the ASHRAE standards and everything else. And now I know that at that point, I'm gonna get about 30 B2s per square foot out of that radiant floor. So in that little thousand square foot shop, I'm gonna have 30,000 BTU output. That's it. Okay, so basically you wanna take all these numbers, add them together, and that will tell you what your minimum boiler output, or your maximum, sorry, your maximum boiler output should be. Okay, so let's just say that number totals out to 247,000 BTUs. At that point, you wanna to go to your preferred boiler manufacturer, look in their charts, see what boiler or combination of boilers will equal or slightly greater than 240 some thousand BTUs or whatever number, okay? You wanna go above that by a small percentage, but don't go drastically above that. Do not add 25, 30%. No, there's no reason why. Keep it tight. You gotta remember over time, those windows have probably improved. That roof insulation has probably improved. The ceiling of the doors and everything else has probably improved. So that takes that heat loss calculation down even further. So don't drastically oversize that number because right now you did the best you could and you know what this stuff can put out, and that's the maximum you need to put in. So don't oversize radiators. I don't wanna hear the story, well, it's a modulating boiler. 
If you can't get low enough, that modulating boiler, you're not doing yourself any favor. So size the boiler correctly. You'll have a lower install cost. You have a lower operating cost and you will have a much more efficient, comfortable system.